the third installation of our community update series, Keeping Up with Holly Springs. I'm Brenda Carroll, and I serve as the local political coordinator for Holly Springs. Um, we're really excited to highlight the growing community and, and uh, the population there has, you know, over the past 10 years has um, gone to over 41,000 citizens, making it the seventh fastest growing community in North Carolina. Go Holly Springs. Um, today, we're going to hear about what continues to drive the new residents to this town and what makes it so special. We're joined by several guests um, in this event of Keeping Up with Holly Springs. And I'd like to take a few moments to introduce each of them to you so that you uh, know who's with us and, and not with us. Unfortunately, um, the mayor was hoping to be with us, but he's not gonna be able to join us this morning, but we're honored to have Mayor Pro Tem Dan Barry with us. Dan Barry was elected to the Holly Springs Town Council in November of 2017, and also serves as Mayor Pro Tem um, a Holly Springs resident since 2012. His involvement with the community has included service on the town of Holly Springs Planning Board and as president of his homeowners association. Prior to moving to Holly Springs, Dan served 10 years as a volunteer firefighter in Pennsylvania. Go Dan. He is an Eagle Scout and earned a Bachelor of Science degree in business finance from Penn State University and a master's in business administration from St. Joseph's University. Mayor Pro Tem, we're happy to have you with us. We also have Randy Harrington, town manager. Randy Harrington became Holly Springs town manager in August of 2018 after 11 years with the city of Charlotte, where he served in roles as budget and evaluation director and later as chief financial officer and Director of Management and Financial Services prior to joining the town of Holly Springs. A native of Nebraska, he is has a bachelor's degree in political science with minors in economics and criminal justice from Nebraska Wesleyan University. I'm sorry, Randy, I've got to tease you about that. Criminal justice and being in in the role that you're in just seems to fit pretty well sometimes, it right? Is, so. <laughs> <laughs> he has a master's degree in public administration from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Welcome. Uh, we have Leanne Plummer, who is with Parks and Rec the Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, Leanne Plummer has been the director of the Holly Springs Park and Recreation Department since February 2019. She brings 20 plus years of experience from a variety of municipal government agencies in Ohio, Maryland, and North Carolina. In Holly Springs, she is responsible for setting the course, vision, and direction for 36 full-time staff members with an operating budget of $56 million to coordinate six major parks, 12 miles of greenways, a nature center, cultural arts center, recreation center and 1700 seat multi-sport stadium. She has an MBA from the University of Maryland, University College and is a certified parks and recreation professional. Welcome. Um, Kendra Parrish is utilities and infrastructure executive director. Kendra is the executive director of utilities and infrastructure for the town of Holly Springs. She has served in various roles for the town um, for almost 20 years and currently leads divisions that include asset management, capital infrastructure, stormwater, distribution, collection, pump stations, and wastewater treatment. Uh, Parrish graduated from North Carolina State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering. She also holds a master's degree in public administration from Villanova. Kendra, welcome. Um, J. Scott Chase, Holly Springs Assistant Town Manager, an International City County Management Association credentialed manager, wow, that's a mouthful, and certified planner through the American Institute of Certified Planners with 23 years of combined county, municipal, and private sector planning and management experience. 
Chase has served as assistant town manager with the town of Holly Springs since, Janu since January 2019. In his role, he oversees the town's development services, utilities and infrastructure, and public works department. Chase also has served as town manager for the town of Swansboro and directed planning and community development with the Wooten Company. He holds a bachelor's and master's degree from East Carolina University. Wow, are we honored to have you all with us today. And Mayor Pro Tem Barry, we will turn this over to you to get it started and look forward to all the information you all will share today. All right, thanks, Brenda. Uh, Randy, you want me to share the, the slide deck or? No, oh, there we go. Thank Got you. it now, thanks, Tamara. Excellent. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks for your interest in Holly Springs. We're all honored to be here. We can jump to uh, to the next slide real quick, Tamara, and I'll get started with uh, with a quick overview of the town and what's important for our, our town council. Uh, a, a few years ago, when Randy first joined us, actually, the, the town council adopted our first strategic plan, and this strategic plan is really important to us because it provides the roadmap for what's uh, most important and what are the strategic priorities for the town council. Uh, we, we are able to document that and we've identified five strategic priority areas that you see here and each of those have initiatives underneath them that contain executable actions we can uh, we can take or that we're charging our staff to carry out uh, throughout the year. We update this annually every year at our, our retreat. And typically what happens is if a priority is important enough and voted on by the council to make it into the plan, it will usually mean that we're going to end up funding it in some capacity in our, in our budget. So this is an early way to do our budget planning. This starts in probably November, December of each year. Uh, and then at our annual retreat or on the February timeframe, we, uh, we refine the plan and then adopt it following, following our retreat just ahead of our budget uh, adoption, which takes place in June. So it all kind of flows together and we've now established a really good planning process to listen to community input, listen to stakeholder input, business input, and then define what the priorities are for our town, document those and, and move forward into our budget process. Holly Springs is an absolutely fantastic place to live. I moved here nine years ago with my wife. We now have three children. And even before we had children, it was a great place to live. But now being a father and, uh, and a parent, we see all the amenities and, and what really attracts folks to this town. We're growing very, very fast in Holly Springs and, and a lot of families are moving here. And it's just great to see all of the, the, uh, the activity that we have and, uh, and all the young folks that are coming here to enjoy what we all love about Holly Springs. Um, what's bringing people here to Holly Springs? Well, first of all, we're consistently ranked among the safest towns and cities in North Carolina. Just this, uh, this past June, I believe, SafeWise has ranked us the number one safest city in North Carolina once again. And secondarily, from a fire department standpoint, uh, last year we achieved our top ISO rating of, of number one. That's the insurance service organization that rates fire departments, and it has a direct correlation to businesses that have to pay premiums for uh, commercial insurance. And the lower that ISO rating is, the cheaper the insurance premiums are. That organization evaluates how many fire trucks you have, how good is your hydrants, how many, how much water supply do you have, where are those trucks stationed from a coverage standpoint, and then you get a rating every every you know four or five years. You take that test and get a rating. There's only tw about 20 departments in the state of North Carolina that have achieved the top rating of of one. Holly Springs is one of those departments. The reason this is possible uh, is because of the, the huge investment that our town makes in public safety. That is one of our strategic priorities you saw on the previous slide, safe and friendly, and it's continually an area that the town council looks to invest in and make sure we have adequate public safety to protect all of our residents, and also that we continue to grow as our, as our town grows. We need more police officers, we need more firefighters, we need more fire trucks, and we have to keep up with that level of service. Uh, to make sure that we can we can staff appropriately for the growth that we're experiencing. Some other accolades and awards that we have. Holly Springs likes to be very competitive. We try to be number one in everything we do. And um, even if we're not number one, ranking highly on some of these lists is, is really great for us and attractive and bringing people into our uh, into our town. We're the number three most popular zip code in the triangle. That was from Zillow in June 2021. 
our farmer's market, the Holly Springs farmer's market was rated number four in the Southeast and number one in North Carolina by the American Farmland Trust. That farmer's market has grown so much. We've had to move its location uh, about a year and a half ago from its prior uh, location in a parking lot off Center Street in our downtown uh, to our cultural arts center and, and library that's sort of behind town hall. Uh, and we, there's a big loop road there on, on Valentine Street where we now line that street with vendors uh, every Saturday morning. And it's every, every week throughout the year now, I think we're moving to based on the success of the farmer's market, the patrons that come out and, and utilize it and buying local farm fresh produce from, from local vendors. Holly Springs was ranked the fifth best place in North Carolina to raise a family. I talked about that a little bit and it's been great for me personally with my own family getting to experience what Holly Springs offers. And then lastly, uh, rated by Zapia as the best city in North Carolina to get a job. We'll talk a little bit about why that is, but we continue to have unprecedented business growth in, uh, in Holly Springs. So those businesses that we have, Holly Springs is a, you know, not a very large town by, by square footage or square miles, uh, but within our town, we have 200 new registered businesses as of January, 2021. This is coming out of a pandemic year. We had 200 brand new registered businesses in our town. Unbelievable growth that we've seen in our business community. And, and I've spoken to some of these residents at Chamber of Commerce events who have started new businesses. They left the private sector or had a, had a job change or an industry change because of the pandemic, started their own business, and now they're absolutely crushing it, whether that's brick and mortar or from their home-based business. Um, but just unprecedented growth we've seen in the number of businesses. 1,400 businesses as of spring 2021. Uh, and then 20 state project submittals as of January 2021. So from a uh, total business standpoint, that number continues to grow as well. And those statistics are from the North Carolina Secretary of State's office, where businesses have to register. And then the project submittals, I'll touch, touch on a little, uh, a little bit of that. Um, the, the state will often submit RFPs or companies that are looking to relocate to North Carolina will submit RFPs to the state uh, and the state will then farm that out across the entire state looking for towns, municipalities, chambers of commerce to submit back to that RFP uh, to try and show prospective companies why their town or their location might be a great place for a company to locate. Holly Springs has been incredibly proactive in this space. Uh, and even most recently at two of the announcements here that I'll talk about, I was in a conversation with the governor just a few weeks ago uh, at our second announcement in the last six months. And the governor made a comment about Holly Springs and the continued, uh, the con the continued success or the continued luck that we've had bringing businesses to our town. Uh, and his comment in that conversation was, you know, Holly Springs is very proactive about going out and getting these businesses to come and they have a great product to offer. So it was great to hear that uh, from, from him and, um, and also a big testament to the success we have in economic development. So the first one, Fujifilm Biosynth Biotechnologies is a, a global biomanufacturing organization that is going to have a very large and unprecedented for Holly Springs $2 billion uh, taxable investment into our town that they are going to construct the world's, uh, actually it's the, the largest cell culture contract manufacturing facility in North America, not the world, but in North America. Uh, that'll be located in, in our Oakview Innovation Park, which is 150 acres. That's one of the largest sites left we have in our business park. Right now we have Securus that's there. Uh, and then this, this site will be directly adjacent to that and they'll be building a large campus. This was announced in March, 2021. Uh, Governor Cooper was there for that announcement as well. And uh, it's planned to open in 2025. They're working on some site preparation right now. And uh, we expect them to enter our development process very, very soon and, uh, and start to get, get working on building the actual site that they will have constructed. It doesn't end there. The next one we had just five months after Fujifilm uh, was Amgen, which is a world leader in uh, biopharmaceuticals. They create life-saving medications for people suffering from serious illnesses and, and heart disease. This is a $550 million investment into Holly Springs. 350 new jobs are going to be created as a result of this relocation or expansion into North Carolina. This, this project will be located at the Friendship Innovation Park, which is a previously undeveloped portion of Holly Springs. And uh, in partnership with the North Carolina General Assembly, uh, with our partners in the governor's office, Wake County Economic Development, the North Carolina Biotechnology Center, 
we've been able to uh, work on getting some funding for public infrastructure improvements to bring utilities to this site, which will unlock not only this potential for Amgen to come here, but also some other future development opportunities as well. And that's been the, the largest uh, impediment for us in getting development to this site was the lack of utilities there due to the cost. Uh, but thanks to all of our partners and strong advocacy uh, in, in the General Assembly and also from the Governor's Office and Secretary of Commerce, we've been able to develop a funding plan to help us achieve getting utilities out to this site. That's gonna allow Amgen to build their facility and then also hopefully some potential uh, future development opportunities as well. This one was announced just a few weeks ago. That was the conversation I mentioned uh, being involved in with Governor Cooper. And they're also planning to open in 2025. So within the next three to five years, Holly Springs, uh, if it's not already a busy enough place, it's gonna be pretty busy over the next three to five years. We've got a number of road projects taking place and now these large, uh, these large bio, pharmaceutical and life science companies building a presence right here in our own town. And we're absolutely thrilled to see that. We do welcome businesses of all sizes to Holly Springs. While it's been great that we've been able to go out and land a couple of what we call the, the big whales, um, focusing on our own network of, of in-town businesses is also very important to us. And we have a dedicated position on our staff to do that within our economic development department. My Computer Career is a homegrown company that started in a, in a garage in a house in Holly Springs, moved to an office space. They had to buy more condo space to, to put all their employees. This is a, a technical training um, program company, and um, they are, are relocating and have outgrown their current uh, location right in Holly Springs across from Town Hall, and they are relocating adjacent to Ting Park as part of a, a county-initiated project that will contain not only My Computer Career's new headquarters, which is the left portion of this, this upper uh, picture right here, and then the right-hand side will include some affordable housing apartments that DHIC is going to build uh, in partnership with, with Wake County, and, uh, and also the towns. This was a very unique project to have two of those things come in together on a piece of county owned land and one that will tackle two needs that we have in town. One growing our, our commercial tax base and then number two, providing some affordable housing options uh, for more folks to, to have an affordable opportunity to live within Holly Springs. My computer career will be making a $20 million investment in Holly Springs to build uh, their campus headquarters. They'll bring 350 new jobs and retain 125 jobs that already exist in Holly Springs. In addition to their headquarters building, uh, the building to the right of the blue one there is a uh, proposed office space, um, office space retail commercial building that they will lease out to other tenants. And then um, future down the road, the purple one is a proposed potential uh, theater setting. Think sort of like DPAC. I think the owners are very passionate about the arts and would love to philanthropically raise enough funds and, and put some dollars behind that uh, to have a performing arts center in Holly Springs on a larger scale. Um, and, and that one is, is definitely something they're thinking about, not something that's been immediately submitted, but definitely on the radar for the town. And we continue to engage with them uh, on the best use of this property and hope we can, we can see that vision through uh, to, its, to its full potential. Uh, this one's currently in the permitting process. So again, all over town, it's gonna be busy over the next, the next three years as we get going on these projects. Uh, the last thing that I'll touch on is the UNC Health Rex Holly Springs Hospital. So our town is growing not only in population, but we're growing vertically as well. This is an eight-story building, the largest one that will be in, in Holly Springs at this point. And uh, for, for 20 years, for over 20 years, Mayor Dick Sears has been absolutely instrumental in working with the UNC folks to bring a hospital to Holly Springs. This was his vision when he first became mayor. It took a long time navigating the state certificate of need process, getting that uh, approved and ready to go, and then getting the right plan in place with UNC. They've remained committed to the town. They've started with a medical office building and have now expanded uh, to this hospital facility located on the same piece of property adjacent to their medical office buildings. It's scheduled to open in uh, mid-September. The last update we received from UNC, they will have a large labor and delivery presence in this hospital, and they've already had about 90 babies that are scheduled to be born after the hospital opens in mid-September. Uh, so we are very excited about quality healthcare coming to Holly Springs, and, and not only that, 
uh, but also the job potential as well. Anything from custodians and cafeteria workers to nurses, to doctors, to ER physicians, uh, EM, EMS personnel to transport folks from this facility to, to UNC Rex's other facilities in Raleigh or in Chapel Hill. A lot of potential jobs here, about 700 new ones coming to Holly Springs. Some of them filled uh, locally and then some they're transferring people from other locations in to staff this hospital. Uh, but we're very, very excited about what this is gonna do for our town. Uh, from a healthcare standpoint, and um, just absolutely great to see this getting ready to open here in a matter of weeks. So I think that's all for me, and I will turn it over to our town manager, Randy Harrington. So my role in this whole thing as part of the town council is to come up with a vision for what we town, what we want the town to be and how we uh, can, can go out and, and get input to create our strategic plan, develop those priorities. Uh, and then Randy has the most important job in town or one of the most important jobs in town, and that is to execute on that vision that the town council comes up with. So my pleasure to turn it over to him to tell us uh, a little bit more about what's happening in Holly Springs. Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem. Barry, I really appreciate that uh, kind introduction. And um, we have a just a remarkable team here, uh, a great group of close to 350 uh, public servants who are really dedicated, uh, some of the most dedicated uh, public servants I've ever worked with. And uh, it's a real pleasure working with uh, the team that we have here. So uh, let me just highlight a couple uh, additional things around some uh, growth uh, uh, characteristics and um, building off a little bit of what, what Mayor Pro Tem Barry mentioned. Uh, where where are some of those core areas in town where we're seeing some of that economic development really uh, uh, be driven? And uh, one area there is that Friendship Innovation Park, which Mayor Pro Tem mentioned. They're adjacent to Highway 1. Uh, this is where Amgen will be going into. Um, and then um, there's some other open up, it'll open up some other area there for future uh, uh, industry and other businesses to come to. We also have our business park, which many of you are, are probably familiar with and uh, some of the areas within that and around it, the Green Oaks Tech Center, Oakview Innovation Park, um, uh, along with our business park are some of the areas that uh, we see a lot of our targeted, some of our larger and medium size and even some small um, industry uh, go into these particular areas. But these are kind of like those core areas in town where we're seeing some of the most uh, focus for uh, some of those larger economic development projects. Next slide. Uh, this gives you just a little bit of a, you know, hopefully a little bit of a represent, representation of where some of those investments and some of the anticipated investments that we would expect here in town. Uh, obviously, we mentioned the Amgen out there at Friendship Innovation Park, uh, Fujifilm, Diocese Biotechnologies there um, in our Oakview Innovation Park, um, adjacent here to our business park. Right above that, you have ski properties and Crescent Communities. Um, they're currently building some flex space along with some life sciences space uh, there in our business park. Up above that, the Calvert Ice Sports Sportsplex. I know folks like Mayor Pro Tem Berry and, and particularly some others who have moved down here from the Northeast really love ice sports. And uh, there are not enough um, ice rinks and, and ice uh, space, so to speak, uh, in the triangle. Uh, but uh, the, the, there's a developer who's looking to, um, uh, to put uh, a really a fantastic sportsplex with Olympic size uh, rinks, um, NHL style uh, um, size rinks, along with some junior, uh, junior rink. Uh, to develop uh, ice sports um, here in, in the triangle. Uh, you go down below that, you see the UNC Health uh, system in terms of where it's roughly located there in town, which was mentioned. Uh, Wegmans, uh, we are on the list for Wegmans as a future location here in town, and that would be adjacent to the Lowe's Home Improvement Center, which just opened up uh, here this past month. Um, also, if you haven't been to downtown Holly Springs, you've got to come downtown. Um, there is so much energy and vitality and investment that's going on. It's really exciting. Um, just uh, uh, we've got the block on Main, which just recently opened up here uh, this past uh, just a few months ago, uh, late spring, and then as well Town Hall Commons, which has been open now for a little over a year, uh, about a year and a half, and some really wonderful develop, um, investment. We've also had some um, other kind of more historical type properties get repurposed, and uh, we're really excited about all that that's uh, occurring here in the downtown. Some great shopping and some great eating, some really fantastic eating. So. Um, invite your friends to downtown Holly Springs to shop and eat. The, uh, and just above that, uh, my computer career, the circle, uh, there looks like the on off button there, uh, kind of in the up, upper middle of the screen, uh, where they're located out, or will be locating out near our Ting Park uh, there in northern Holly Springs. So, give you a little bit of a sense of where some of that development is going uh, and where anticipated development as well. Uh, next slide, please. 
When you look at where the uh, we anticipate most of the residential population growth to occur, there are really four areas. And what you see here uh, on this particular chart, close to 3,300 um, approved but yet to be built lots um, uh, in Holly Springs. And so you know, I think you all know this from the work that you do. Um, these are lots where council has approved uh, those site plans and, and those subdivisions. Uh, but the builders have yet to pull the building permits to uh, to build those homes. But these four areas, and you notice here, primarily on the western side of town, we do have some other areas, uh, kind of some pockets around town that that are being um, have some new residential growth. But uh, the bulk of the growth is occurring in the western uh, portion of the town. Next slide, please. Um, you know, translating that a little bit differently, well, then how many building permits get pulled per year? Uh, this is a, a little bit detailed graph, but the long and short of it, the kind of the key message here, you, you do see some business cycle type, um, um, uh, you know, patterns here. But uh, in 2005 was when we had the highest number of building permits at 822. This past year, we were just shy of that. Uh, and uh, so kind of our second highest building permit year, we expect this year to be another really high year. Um, and you can see here in terms of that growth here over the past um, five to 10 years of that consistent um, investment in new residential dwellings here in Holly Springs. Next slide. And so, you know, what does all that translate to? And these are probably some stats that many of you have seen, but we expect to be close to uh, really to, to surpass 50,000 residents um, here by 2024. And that growth has continued pretty steady. We've been adding roughly about 12 to 17, 1800 residents per year um, over the last uh, kind of five to eight years. Uh, and we expect that to continue. So um, a lot of excitement in Holly Springs, um, a lot of uh, families realizing you know, just what a great place it is to, you know, to raise a family, to live, um, to work, and um, a lot of great amenities here that uh, you're gonna hear about uh, here in the next uh, couple of presenters. So with that, uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over. I think the next presenter is gonna be uh, Scott Chase. So Scott. Scott's one of our assistant town managers. Uh, thank you, Randy. Um, this was a surprise getting back from vacation today, and uh, Chris unfortunately couldn't be with us this morning, so I'm, I'm going to fill in for him the best I can this morning. A lot of our uh, backgrounds have a little similar backgrounds. Both of us are certified planners, and so if you really enjoy planning and designing our future, this is the place to be. Uh, it's, it's almost mesmerizing um, the work and the planning and, uh, and the, the focus on our making our future bright is, is, is above board here in Holly Springs. And we're really, really be excited to be a part of that. Um, I'm going to run through a few of the plans that are that's been recently adopted and also um, uh, share a little bit about what's coming forward with uh, the planning efforts going forward. I mean, we, we can't be here today if, if it wasn't for great planning and good leadership behind those planning activities. It really has put us in a great position to be able to be where we are today in Holly Springs. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, just recently adopted as our future land use and character plan update. It, it really is a shift from where you had traditional land use and that, that's your primary focus. But with this update we had is really we're concentrating on the form. Uh, what is, how, does this, how does this site uh, mix in with the surrounding area and its environment. It's a really important aspect of this plan and also focuses on what, you know, potential building might look like. But again, you know, that's a, that's a, that's an outlook that you would like to see because it gives us the opportunity to be more sustainable in the future going forward is how that site interacts with its surrounding environment. So it's a, it is a shift and uh, we're really excited about uh, what this plan is uh, uh, presented for us in our future and uh, really excited about that. To next slide. To make uh, the land use uh, or the land use and character plan a reality, you, you need to have uh, what I would say a good zoning ordinance, good regulations around those. And right now we have what's called a UDO, it's just a Unified Development Ordinance. And we're in the process right now, it's about an 18 month process. It kicked off in May of 2020. And what we're trying to do is get uh, the, the regulations to align with the future land use and character plan. It's extremely important for that. And also as well as, uh, I don't know if any of folks have interacted with our present UDO, but it's uh, can be quite cumbersome. And so it's an opportunity to make the development process a little bit more user friendly, friendly and certainly from a development perspective and getting permitting and such, we wanna make this, we wanna make it predictable um, and not with a lot of surprises. So really excited about this process, it's well underway. 
And uh, hopefully in the coming months, uh, this will get adopted and we can start, you know, going even further with, um, with our land use uh, and, and character that we'd like to see here in Holly Springs. We're anticipating probably some uh, uh, another um, engagement with the community sometime in September. And then again, hopefully an adoption in, in October with town council. Next slide. As uh, others have mentioned on uh, this presentation, there is a tremendous amount of activity downtown. Very excited about it, you know, with the anchor products such as the uh, UNC um, Health Rex, um, Rex, and then uh, as Randy mentioned, the Block on Main, and then uh, Town Hall Commons. But it's really important that with such transition that's underway, we wanna make sure that we're heading in the right direction and making sure that we keep the character of the district. And with that, there's an effort called, that we have already in place it's called the Village District Area Plan. And so uh, in the coming months, uh, we're probably slating this for in 2022, fall, first half of 2022, is making sure that the downtown area, uh, you know, you have residences that are here. You're, you're starting to see a lot of conversions from residential to commercial. Certainly uh, parking is a key aspect. When, when new businesses come into downtown, you wanna make sure you can park in the area. And also too, uniquely, um, one of our major thoroughfares, thoroughfares come right through downtown. So how does all this work together? So in a, an upcoming plan update is really a, a critical for this. Again, you know, we're looking to see this to kick off in the first half of 2022. Next slide. Another aspect of the uh, uh, that you, was really important when you have significant growth and you're looking to the future is um, is comprehensive transportation planning. Is making sure that we are positioned appropriately for you know moving folks and services through town, and also can look at it in a multimodal way. And when I say multimodal, all aspects of transportation: this bicycle, pedestrian, transit and vehicular and making sure that folks and services can move to the town in adequate may and make sure we're positioned um, uh, for the future with all the growth and such. Um, we began this process in approximately November 2020 and adoption is expected in early 2022. It is a community driven effort, um, you know, making sure that we're positioned for the for future growth. Um, we have an anticipated pop up event uh, at Holly Fest on uh, October 30th from 10 to four. So it's certainly your input's uh, really important with this. And um, we have an active uh, website available for this and all of our planning documents are up on the website um, and certainly put your input um, for these plans are certainly important. Next slide. When we adopted the uh, future land use uh, character and update plan, there was a segment um, within that plan that it recommended some future uh, look into you know, making sure that um, with the 540 that is coming through Holly Springs, we want to make sure it's a, this is a rare opportunity that we have in, in the planning world to make. I mean, this is this is almost like a clean slate around 540 and making sure that we're heading in direction from an economic perspective, uh, housing opportunities. Um, and also too, you know, how does uh, how does the how does 540 interact with the uh, surrounding and existing uses there? So this is a rare opportunity from a planning perspective um, to really put us in a in a, in a good direction there uh, around the new infrastructure that's coming through town. Uh, council awarded the contract um, in August, and we have a ke uh, scheduled kickoff in the fall of 2021. And this would be our Northeast Gateway Plan. Next slide. Uh, last but certainly not least, one of the updates to the uh, to our future planning um, perspective here is our housing affordability study. Uh, we're right now in the process of interviewing uh, consultants. Now it's uh, scheduled for kickoff in the fall of 2021. It's probably uh, approximately about a year process for this. And the goal from the housing affordability study is to analyze current housing trends in Holly Springs and provide strategies for ensuring that there is long-term housing diversity and affordability in Holly Springs in the future. So this is a really important plan for us. And as Mayor Pro Tem mentioned, we just recently in the, were in the process of reviewing a great opportunity there off North Main with my computer career and then the um, affordable, uh, affordable housing project there um, in part partnership with the county. So that's, we, we were certainly making good strides in, um, in that direction. Uh, I think at this point, um, we are going to kick off the presentation over to Kendra Parrish, our Executive Director for Utilities and Infrastructure. Good morning. 
Um, so we can go to the next slide. We, as Scott had mentioned, with the comprehensive transportation plan and land use, we are looking at potential land uses and looking at how to uh, keep things moving in Holly Springs. So as you as you see here on the screen, and as you probably know, I-540 is um, here in our, in our community and under construction, and they are planning, um, the Turnpike Authority is who's administering that uh, project, and they are planning to open that up in 2023. And that will allow connection from NC55 bypass, which you see on the top left of the screen. And it will run all the way to I-40. Um, that will lead just one segment out of the I-540 loop. And that's the section from I-40 um, to US-64. And so um, that's a great, you know, a great facility for our community. It allows our community to be able to travel just about anywhere in the county within about 20 to 30 minutes. So great for folks that are moving in. They also, um, the Turnpike Authority has an interactive construction map that is on their website and you can get um, kind of real-time updates on detours and what's going on in certain areas. And so when I finish speaking here in the chat, I will attach that link as well as the project manager's name and number for specific questions. I know a lot of times I've worked with a lot of realtors that are trying to sell property around 540, and there's a lot of questions that come with that. And so having the right people to contact when you do have one of those properties listed, um, you know, we want to provide that, that assistance to you as well. Next slide. And um, so, you know, as we mentioned, congestion, everyone, this is a great place to move as with several other towns in Wake County, but with that comes congestion. And so our, our citizens passed a transportation bond in 2018 and put us at 40 million um, to invest in transportation improvements for our town. And what we've done is a really great strategy is taking that funding and then using it as seed money to then gain access to additional funds from the Department of Transportation so that you can take you know, 10 million and put it towards a match and get a $20 million project. Um, so a lot of that's being done behind the scenes, um, but wanted to just highlight for you that Holly Springs road widening uh, that project is, um, we're getting ready to advertise that project and then construction will begin this fall and it will last, it's about a three year project um, for completion in 2024. Um, there will be um, on site lane shifts, there will not be any closing of the road, but what this provides us is um, a really great connection through town that there's gonna be a bridge constructed over Middle Creek. Um, as many of you might know, you know, from time to time, that road does have to uh, close due to uh, flooding. And so with this bridge, that will uh, not happen. Um, as well as we have uh, three schools and this has been a community uh, project where through the design process, we've reached out to all the different um, property owners, the schools, police, fire, um, different people in the community and um, incorporated several things for innovative design for pedestrians and cyclists. And um, you know, really will be looking to highlight that corridor um, and make it an amenity for the community. There's uh, two other projects on the screen, Main Street Right Turn Lane and 55 Right Turn Lane. Those are just gonna help with congestion, help your commute um, in the morning and in the afternoon. Avent Ferry Road Realignment. Um, that project is, um, we're still under design with that project and that helps uh, get a more direct connection to some of our destination spots in the downtown area. Um, that is, you know, that's it for the transportation for, for now, just kind of to highlight. Another uh, thing I wanted to mention was that, you know, when I was thinking about what realtors may would want to hear about the town, um, 
internet and the town invested um, several years ago in running fiber to a lot of our town facilities. And with that gained us an opportunity for a third party internet provider to come to Holly Springs. And so prior to COVID and, you know, good, good Wi-Fi connection was important, but now with COVID with a lot of the online and remote working internet is definitely um, important. And we here in Holly Springs, we have a third party vendor that offers internet that is really fast and um, a little bit cheaper than some of the others. So that would be another great addition to Holly Springs. And I can turn it over. Good morning. So I'm Leanne Plummer, the Director of Parks and Recreation, and I appreciate the wonderful introduction at the beginning. But there was one correction I wanted to make. I think it was stated that the Parks and Recreation operating budget was 56 million. I wish. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's only 5 million, still substantial as for our growing town. But I just wanted to put that clarity out there in case uh, any of you heard that, because I thought, man, I got a raise that I didn't even know about. Um, but it's really exciting um, to be with Holly Springs. You can hear all of the great development for both the business and the residential side. And you know, the Parks and Recreation Department really strives to be able to offer and emphasize that quality of life that really wants to bring and attract um, both those businesses and those citizens. Um, so I'm gonna share a little bit about some of the exciting projects and, and efforts that the town has been taking over the last couple of years. If, uh, Tamara, if you wanna move to the next slide, please. So with all the planning that um, Scott mentioned, Parks and Recreation is also right up there. So uh, in, let's see, 2019, we kicked off a 15 month planning process to update a Parks, Recreation and Greenways Master Plan. Um, it was approved by town council this past March. And this really helped set uh, the town and the department uh, for guiding us for the next 10 years, really identifying where our focus areas should be. The analysis included a thorough public engagement component to find out what's really most important to our residents here in town. And one of the, the outcomes of this, um, this process included an update, uh, updated Greenways network plan and also this map that you see here. It's a park search area map. And it really identifies areas in towns that need to be considered for our park acquisition and development. And the strategically identified areas help us align with the future land use plan that Scott also mentioned and help move the town closer to achieving our goals of having all of our residents within a 10 minute walk of a park or open space area. So we're really excited over the next 10 years to look at uh, ways and means to achieve that goal of acquiring and developing additional park areas. If you wanna to move to the next slide. Um, with that, uh, in 2011, Holly Springs voters approved a $15 million bond referendum for park development and improvements, and we had $8 million remaining from that revenue source. Um, the town uh, included an informal survey, and from the, those results, it determined that greenways and Castle Park, or additional parkland, should be the focus of that remaining investment. These priorities were later confirmed by the results of the community survey that was included in our Parks and Recreation Master Plan project as well. So we're excited to share with you that we are working on three major projects. Um, the first being the Arbor Creek Middle Creek Greenway, which is shown on the right side of the slide in that image. Um, this is a 2.8 mile greenway that connects uh, Sunset Lake Road to the north to Holly Springs Road to the southeast. Um, in addition, this is a regional connection um, in terms of greenways, those of you that are following that. So north here of Sunset Lake Road, we connect to the town of Apex and they will be putting in their Middle Creek Greenway. So it's pretty exciting that this is a major connector for us. There are also several neighborhoods that will be able to connect to this uh, 2.8 mile greenway. And then coupled, uh, Kendra just showed the Holly Springs Road widening project. Um, we will terminate this greenway along that road and that will allow, um, that project includes a, a multi-purpose side path, um, which will again, really achieve the town's goals of having that pedestrian and bike connectivity um, from the north to uh, north and apex all the way through our residential communities and along Holly Springs Road to just about downtown. And we're really striving to link our neighborhoods to our schools, to our parks, and even in our, our employment centers. So we're pretty excited about this project. We are anticipating going under construction for this project 
in spring of 2022. The other greenway project we're working on is what we call the Utley Creek Greenway. And that is shown um, with the yellow highlighted section on our left slide. And this is an approximately 1.2 mile greenway connecting our Holly Glen neighborhood, one of our large uh, residential areas uh, in the West to an existing trail segment that we have um, in an additional pedestrian tunnel under Highway 55 to the east. And again, this is a great opportunity to provide off road connection to downtown Holly Springs from our uh, res residential areas in the west. Also shown on this slide in the bottom left corner is, our, uh, is a yellow highlighted section, and that is the town's newest acquired parkland. So in 2020, the town purchased 56 acres of parkland along Cass Holt Road. We're pretty excited about this location. Um, it is directly across the street from Holly Springs High School. And so we believe that it provides some amazing um, connectivity and some, some great uh, alignment uh, for sharing the resources for this new park. This will be our first public park west of Highway 55. And as we talked earlier, you know, there's such a growing residential community um, in this side of town. We're really short on having our park, uh, parkland available for our residents there. The town has recently hired a landscape design firm to master plan and design phase one of this park. And we're also hoping to move into phase one construction in some time in 2023. Um, if you can move to the next slide. So we are again, actively engaged in um, reaching out to our residents to find out what they would like to see for this park. And we're pleased to showcase and share with you that our, public, our first public meeting for the design of this park is Wednesday, September 8th at 7 p.m. It will be held virtually. Um, and the link can be found on the town's website. Um, it's here on this, the screen, or you can even go to, to search the Castle Road Park, and that will help um, direct you to the, the active link for that public meeting. Um, certainly, you know, with the last year and the pandemic, things have caused a lot of changes and shifts in our programs and activities, um, but it has not stopped uh, the town from providing, you know, excellent services and, and and community resources to our residents. Um, just want to share two uh, upcoming uh, kind of notes, if you will. Um, there's a lot of activities, as we said, that we have been able to um, shift and continue with, with COVID and the pandemic. And uh, particularly at our Ting Park, um, as we talked about with some of the development that's occurring, we just completed a successful Salamanders baseball season. And as well, we're preparing for several outdoor concerts and holiday events to take place this fall and winter at Ting. We found last year it's great to be outside and this venue really lends itself for uh, easy access uh, for roads and um, just amenities that are located on that site. So I encourage you to uh, check out the town's website uh, for additional information if you wanna share with maybe some of the, the folks that you're working with on the residential side. And then lastly, I know this was mentioned by Scott, um, as always, there's an annual tradition in Holly Springs, our annual Holly Fest, and that will take place at Sug Farm on October 30th this year. And it's a great opportunity to learn about the community. We've got several local businesses uh, featured, kids activities, entertainment, of course, a whole bunch of food trucks, and there'll be other um, information booths with uh, local vendors to kind of share what's happening in Holly Springs and in the regional uh, community. So check out our website. Um, there's also a, um, a great access point. If you go to the hollyspring.gov, uh, hollyspringsnc.gov, um, there's a new resident uh, link that is also available to those that you may be working with that to want more information about what's happening in town. So that's all I have. And uh, I'll turn it back over to our host and see if there's any questions. Thank you all. That was a great presentation. A lot of really good information for our folks to go back and share with their clients um, or use for own personal um, experience. So we do have um, a couple of prepared questions for all of our attendees. If you have any questions for our panelists, please feel free to drop that in the Q&A feature. Jordan will be um, moderating those as they come in, and we are happy to, to ask those for you all. Um, so our first question here, and I guess it's kind of for the group as a whole, um, you feel free to, to kind of jump in. It's a, it's a fun question. What would you say is your top reason for moving to Holly Springs? You know, I, the, the, 
I think with Leanne uh, rounding it out there, that the Parks and Rec, um, we have some amazing Parks and Rec amenities. And um, if any of you have not been to Bass Lake on, a, on, a, on an early morning or a late evening, it's one of the prettiest spots in, in, in all of Holly Springs. And uh, really proud of that and, and some of our other parks. We've got some great parks and, and wonderful greenways. So uh, for me, that's that would be a, that would be it. Awesome. Um, let's see. Mayor Pro Tem, what would you say is your top reason for moving to Holly Springs? Sort of a funny story. When we moved to Holly Springs, we drove as far out as we could within the town's limits and thought, you know, there's a bunch of farms out here. This is a great place, you know, to have, to have a house. And now it's nothing but growth all around us. So we kind of knew what was going to happen, but but probably not the full uh, the full spectrum of it. Um, but we do really like where we live, and it's it's a great um, it's a it's a great neighborhood and a great part of town. And we're getting more and more connectivity as as each development project comes in. And there's one that's close to us that'll build. Uh, you know, a, a greenway that will help us get from, you know, a part of Southwest Holly Springs. It's all pretty much island developments. Uh, there's going to be a side path going in along South Main and Piney Grove Wilbon Road that'll help connect over a thousand residential homes uh, to like where Chick-fil-A is and Harris Teeter and that entire shopping center. So although I live a mile from Chick-fil-A, I can't walk there. Um, so I'm really excited about that and just seeing this area develop and the amenities that are going to be unlocked for all of our residents here. Awesome. Um, so our next question, a little more pointed, um, but as you all and surrounding areas, surrounding municipalities, we continue to see increased growth. Um, how are you collaborating to address any strain that, that this growth might place on transportation, education, other public services? Um, and that can mean amongst departments. It can also mean um, amongst outside entities. So like um, Wake County Public Schools or other organizations, how, all, how are you all collaborating internally as well as externally um, on any strain that, that growth might place and is placing on Holly Springs? Uh, I'd be happy to maybe start and then uh, Kendra, you may have a good example with, uh, on the water side, but let me maybe off on a high level say that um, the, all the town and city managers in Wake County, we have a really strong group. Uh, we meet monthly and we talk about a variety of issues that are occurring all across the county to help us be more regional um, in our thought process and help understand you know, where we might be able to support another town. And so from a high level standpoint, uh, I think that's really important. You don't see that in all metro areas. But the level of camaraderie and collaboration and regionalism, um, I would characterize it as quite high um, here in, in Wake County. And that you know, professionally makes it a great place to, to work and, and help address the, the needs that we have that are impacting all of us, particularly around growth. I can chime in on the water. Um, so the town purchases our potable water, and there's been great regional effort um, with the surrounding communities as well as other counties. We purchase our water right now from Harnett County. And um, we're also talking with Sanford um, to have additional water supply. We have connections with, uh, water line connections with the town of Cary as well as the town of Apex. And so there's great regionalization working with them to make sure that we have redundant water um, for our residents and businesses. And, and on a transportation front too, we're all a part of CAMPO, which is our capital area management um, metropolitan planning organization. So uh, it gives us opportunity to collaborate on transportation projects that are very interactive with the community. So uh, Kendra um, has been a part of that organization for the last 15 to 20 years. And a lot of the good planning and uh, transportation projects, she certainly has collaborated and, and really helped in that direction along with the mayor as well. They've been really strong advocates for um, Good transportation planning here in Holly Springs. Great. So we do have a couple of questions um, coming in. So this is unique to Holly Springs. Um, I, I'm a longtime Holly Springs resident, so I understand where this is question is coming from. Um, and I know it's a hot topic amongst citizens, um, but the land build. Um, what is the town doing to, to work on um, the smell that comes from the landfill? There was um, an article just posted this morning by ABC 11, so it's back out in the news. 
maybe I'm the best one to try, maybe start on this one. Um, uh, it has been an issue, and um, it's been an issue particularly the last couple of years where there have been some elevated levels of odor. Uh, but one of the things I'll say that, that the, um, the mayor and the council, along with staff, have been really engaged, uh, highly engaged, probably um, of, of any issue over the last two years. I'm not sure there's another issue that the mayor and council have been so engaged on um, uh, other than the landfill. Um, working with the county, um, as many of you may know, that the county owns the landfill, uh, and then they contract with a private company to, uh, to operate the landfill. And, uh, but uh, they have been working on, we, ha we have been working with the county uh, and their county commissioners and management to increase the level of investment um, in tools and approaches to mitigate the odor. Um, and, um, and I'm happy to say we have started to see <clears throat> a decline in the number of complaints that are occurring. We do have complaints, uh, but, um, uh, but the trend at this point is getting better. So we're encouraged by that. Great. Um, our next question is around the widening of Holly Springs Road um, and the challenges that are there potentially trying to divert traffic. Um, a member would like to know if you all might be able to provide some more details on the timing and traffic management for their project, but they are very excited for the project to be completed. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, the widening project, um, there will be some lane closures from time to time. And that does not mean the road is closed. That is just, you know, a lane in one direction might be closed and diverting traffic right there on the road with flaggers. Um, those operations are supposed to be from nine in the morning until four in the afternoon. Typically, that's the default time where you can have lane closures to minimize the, the a.m. rush hour and the p.m. rush hour. Um, as you know, on this corridor, we have two elementary schools and one middle school, and they've been, um, you know, very involved with the design and with the, um, the traffic, the phasing of the traffic control. And we're working very closely with the schools to make sure that we um, do not cause any or try to minimize any kind of congestion um, during school times um, in the mornings and in the afternoons. And so um, everything will be, you know, like I said before, there's not an offsite detour. Um, traffic will continue on the existing road over Middle Creek while the bridge is built directly adjacent um, to the traveling um, surface. So. There will, I mean, with any construction, it's very hard to double the size of the road and have absolutely no impact or no headache. Um, so, you know, there will be times going through construction is never fun, but we are looking to minimize that. And we're also looking to utilize our media outlets and to update um, you know, every couple of weeks, like when we're beginning to go into a new phase of the project, or you might start to see a lane shift here or there, we will be pushing that information out and um, trying to get that to our commuters as much as possible. Thank you for that. So I am going to ask one final question um, and kind of combine two that we've gotten here around housing affordability and residential density. So I can't remember, it might have been um, either Randy or Scott mentioned the housing affordability study. Um, and um, so we're just wondering what you might have mentioned the timeline. Can you um, recap that? What is your timeline? Um, what all is that study going to address? And um, any information you can give us about how you all are planning for residential density, higher density areas, um, things of that nature. Thanks, Melissa. I, I guess I'll try to take this one. Randy, you can certainly chime in on this. Um, but again, we're in the process of interviewing consultants and hopefully we'll kick this off um, in the fall. Um, it's probably gonna be somewhere between a 10 and 12 month process. Um, as you guys know, especially for the realty community, things are changing fast. Um, you know, what might not have been an affordable, might, what might have been an affordable product uh, a month ago uh, might not be affordable today. And so those trends are really changing really fast. Uh, this study gives us an opportunity to, to really get a, a good uh, point in time of what's happening in the market. How is Holly Springs um, maybe different from Apex or Cary? And so we want to get a little focus on what's happening here. 
And then there's some opportunities. Um, there'll be some recommendations from the housing study that we can act on. Um, there might be, um, you know, one that uh, a lot of folks gravitate to is density. And I certainly know there's a concern about density, but, you know, how does density play into that? And we won't know a little bit of that, but that might be one of the recommendations for, you know, affordable products is to uh, give opportunities for a little bit more density for the project. But how, you know, how can a town, you know, um, partner with a developer to provide some um, affordable housing opportunities? The good thing about it with our land use plan, our unified development ordinance, we're going to create some of those opportunities too, organically from those documents that gives us some opportunities to provide for some affordable housing. But really, it's, it, when that study occurs, and it's going to be really a lot of community engagement with this, we know this is, is again, this is not just a Holly Springs issue, but this is certainly a regional issue, a national issue for that matter. And certainly um, the study is going to help us get um, some opportunities and create some recommendations that might, well, I would say not might, but will certainly help us um, in our moving forward with that challenge. Great. Well, if our association can be of any assistance during that process, please reach out to us. We always would like to partner um, on a housing affordability project. Um, and we have a lot of resources that we might be able to provide. So hopefully we can reconnect on that offline. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to get to all of our questions. We are out of time. I want to give one last thank you to all of our panelists. Um, and Holly Springs for joining us this morning. Special shout out to Brenda Carroll for doing our introductions and being um, a great resource as our local political coordinator out in Holly Springs. We will be um, culminating all of this information and sending a post webinar email to everyone that registered along with a link to, to review the um, webinar this morning. And as long as our panelists are okay with it, we will share their contact information. So if you all have any follow-up questions, um, you can use them as a resource. And as always, thank you all for joining us.